It's hard to talk about speciation without talking about reproductive isolation, and sometimes that reproductive isolation gets broken down into prezygotic and postzygotic isolating mechanisms. So it's all about the zygote, whether or not this form of isolation prevents the zygote from forming or does some sort of um, prevention of future generations after the zygote. Now remember, a zygote is formed when an egg and a sperm join together through fertilization. They fuse and form a zygote, and then that zygote cell divides to become an embryo. So I like to actually look at these isolating mechanisms in three different chunks, um, so to speak. So the first one is one of the prezygotic isolating mechanisms, and that's just there's no mating whatsoever. So you're isolated reproductively because you don't mate. So you might be isolated by geography or time. So that could be time of day um, or a breeding season that no longer overlaps. And that could also be mating behavior. So birds are famous for having these outrageous mating behaviors that um, can very quickly become isolating. The next category is no zygote. So maybe mating happens um, or mating is attempted, but because of morphology, um, the mating is not successful. So for example, snails actually can coil to the left or to the right. And if you're a left coiled snail, you cannot breed with a right coiled snail. And so one little genetic switch of the coiling direction can isolate a whole section of the population. And that the other way is mating happens, but the sperm and egg no longer fuse. So this is gametic isolation. So that incompatibility means no zygote will form. And the third category is no future generations. So we're looking at two populations. They're hybridizing. Um, so they're mating together and either their hybrids are inviable, meaning that embryo formed from the zygote dies somewhere either a few you know cell divisions in or anywhere up to and before birth the hybrids could be sterile so we might be familiar with tigons or ligers but these two hybrids their that f1 generation of offspring cannot reproduce and so they're not considered a species by our biological species concept. And finally, hybrid breakdown. So this one's a little bit fuzzier because the F1 generation um, of hybrids actually can reproduce. So they're not sterile, they produce offspring, but those offspring are more likely to maybe be sterile, maybe just kind of be stunted so they can't compete with other members of either population. So Again, they're not going to spread their genes to future populations, and so they're not going to, um, you know, help genes flow between the two populations or become their own independent species.